Hi everyone, I'm Carl, and I'm here today with uh, Dire Battles version 2. Wow. This looks really awesome. Um, this is Takara's kind of masterpiece re-release reinterpretation of the Diaclone line from, um, I think they started in the late 70s, or but it definitely was early 80s. And so, deciding to, I guess, make different Masterpiece toys, or make uh, a new line other than Transformers, they went, let's let's do Diaclone again. Um, and so this is the first one that they have done, and it is Dia Battles version 2, or V2. And uh, quite obviously, it is a version 2 of the original Dia Battles. I don't have a Dia Battles version 1, so all I got is this version 2. He's really new, came out uh, 2016 in uh, May, I think was the release, so May 2016. Uh, really cool looking stuff going on here, big box. Let's, uh, let's bring it over and let's have a look at the other side. And on the other side you have a really nicely detailed set of, uh, you know, stuff, all of the Japanese words you could ever want, and all of the English stuff going on as well with the various modes that you will be able to put him in. He is a parts former, not a transformer, but he is a very, very cool part former, um, and we'll get to why he's kind of like a sort of special deluxe parts former. He's not your old sort of, you just click things into other things and call it a day sort of parts former. We'll, we'll get into that. But um, as you can see, what he essentially is, is three basic components, battles one, two, three, and then you build them into the different sets. He also comes with uh, the Dianauts and the Road Viper. I believe you get a, um, some of that stuff is exclusive to this first edition. If you buy him now, you'll get that stuff. Um, maybe the bike or one of the figures is exclusive to this. Not a huge deal, but if, you know... That's your thing. I think the later releases will be slightly, uh, slightly smaller in terms of content. Just a tiny bit. Alright, let's not delay anymore. Let's get him out. And this is the contents. It comes on a nice plastic, uh, very well form-fitted uh, vacuum case. Not the kind of vacuum case that doesn't fit if all the parts are 110% exactly where they're supposed to be. I've seen those before. I hate them. You know, it comes in this nice set. You get everything. It's really nicely laid out. It's all there, ready to go. You also get a lip. You get a sort of instruction manual and a kind of buyer's guide manual going on here. Um, these are kind of like, all right, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's have a quick, 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 quick flick through the, uh, you know, guide, buyer's manual. Some great artwork going on here. Nice, nice pictures. Uh, a story which I believe someone is translating online, so if you really need to know what's going on, you can. And, uh, you know, some, some lore and uh, a mention of the other version that this guy comes in. Uh, it's just a color different thing called the moon base prototype. That's that. Don't worry about that. It's not important. It really isn't. But if you buy it, it's a nice thing to have. Manual. You get the manual. Pretty, uh, pretty, uh, complicated in terms of, you know, nice and, uh, specific. None of this guess what we were trying to tell you sort of stuff. All in Japanese, doesn't really matter, uh, since the pictures are perfectly fine for English speakers. Now, the little extra thing it also comes with, which I have not applied, are these. Now, these are actually little bits of, uh, sort of metal magnetic surface stuff. Um, because you stick them on certain parts, and I believe they tell you in the instructions. Um, and then you have, like, a little magnetic place for these Dianauts to stand as they have metal on their feet. Just like the classic Diaclone drivers. Uh, I don't really like the black and yellow. I think it's kind of gonna look bad on the robot, so I didn't put them on yet. Maybe I will later, but I'm not gonna do it right now. Okay, let's get this open. Okay, and here they are in battles one, two, three modes, along with the guy on a bike. That's really cool, you know? They look great. 
Um, I won't lie to you guys, they did take a couple of minutes to actually put together in a, in a reasonable form, but uh, they have to kind of be assembled and maneuvered a little bit out of the box. Once that's done, you're kind of, you know, you're sitting pretty, as long as you don't want to pack them up, which, actually, I tend to do that, so, um, you know, whatever. So, this is, uh, you know, you can kind of tell what this one is. There might be a head hiding in there. I'm not sure. Uh, great little articulation bits up and down. These bits come out, as you might have noticed, from uh, the fact that they weren't in there to begin with. Landing gears go around. They can do what they want. A lot of this stuff is because these all have kind of like multiple modes that you got to cycle between. So we'll get to their features later on. This is a mild problem. I haven't done any treatment, like any hot water to this. But because these are not toys from the 70s, these are made out of very soft plastic. Now, that's a mixed blessing. Um, obviously, the good thing is that they won't break. Bleep. But the negative is, of course, that they... Well, one of them is kind of... all well, mangy. Definitely could probably fix that with some hot water. Haven't done that yet, but I probably will at some point. Other than that, really nice. Not too much, uh, like, not too many paint apps in this whole thing in general, just uh, straight up out there. But lots of nice, bold colors. Great metallic sort of light sheen to a lot of the parts. Really nice stuff on Battles 1. Let's grab Battles 2. The largest of the battles by far. Probably my favorite. I love this sort of pterodactyl bird sort of look that they have going. All the cockpits open, as you would quite reasonably expect, and uh, the pilots are very, very snug in there. Nice and uh, snug. Uh, problem with that, though, is that you're going to have a struggle getting most other kinds of pilots in there. Can't really fit Diaclone 1, like original Diaclone pilots, in some of these cockpits because they're kind of molded specifically to fit this exact Dianaut style. But uh, if you find pilots that are smaller, yeah, they can fit in. Really, really nice chrome on the uh, jet engines here. Uh, really gorgeous silver paint. Um, very, very executive, uh, sort of high-quality stuff going on. As you would hope, because, you know, we'll talk about the price later, but you would expect something good. Really nice orange highlights on all of the wings. Base of it's not it's not super great from underneath, but I know it's all right. Uh, it doesn't like no really obvious like robot parts kind of hiding around, so that's that's always nice. And finally, well not quite finally, but you know, battles three. Uh, I guess kind of like a tank buggy sort of space exploration vehicle. Uh, neat. Nice, uh, nice general sort of paints and stuff. It's pretty, pretty, pretty good looking here. Pretty nice. I believe I've actually put his leg on the wrong way. Um, whoops. Uh, I don't think you're supposed to be able to see these screws, but I'm not redoing it now. I'll fix it later. Uh, but other than that, you know, like, they're, they're essentially the same leg. You can see some stuff underneath is not completely detailed. That's actually the feet hiding there. But as you can see, pilot sits nicely. And uh, really, really cool looking stuff. Uh, again, this one has probably the least stuff going on. You can move these for uh, various purposes. But there is an extra little feature which I'll show off in a second. Put them like that to uh, give it away. And uh, let's look at the bike real quick. Let's look at the bike real quick. Let's look at the bike. There we go. It's actually a surprisingly nice bike. Uh, I didn't think I'd be very impressed by the bike, but it's actually really, really nice. Um, just great sci-fi bike. Driver sits really nicely on it. Um, great stuff. Really cool. And then let's throw that bike over there. Let's have a Get a good look at the Rock'em Sock'em Dianaut here. Ugh. 
They have a really impressive array of motion. Not sure how well they'll last. You gotta be very, you know, gotta be a little careful with these guys, because they have, like, ball joints on their thighs and on their shoulders. So you gotta be a little careful, but they can get quite a very, very broad range of motion. Their uh, torso has a bend joint in it, so they can do that. And their heads, I don't think their heads turn, interestingly. I guess that was going to be too much work, so they didn't didn't want to risk the heads turning. Maybe the heads can turn, but I don't really trust it. I don't want to break the head trying to check. Okay. Great, great. All the little pilots are really nice. Let's look at this real quick. You can actually store the bike in here, so that you don't even have to put it to the side. It's a nice little... Tidy hole for the bike. The bike actually shrinks. Meh. There you go. Then the bike will fit. Packed away. Wonderful. Alright. Let's put him into Dia Battles mode. Before we get started, this is uh, Battles 3 in the correct formation, what his mode is supposed to be. Looking like. Uh, like he's got grabby claws and his, his treads are at the back. Uh, the great thing about these is, yeah, you can put them together in quite a few different ways, and I messed it up. But, this does let me show you this. This is the beginning of how he comes together. Now, instead of being your sort of average parts former where you just kind of disassemble everything and then reassemble it later, what this guy does is he actually is pushed together by... In, in chunks, kind of. Essentially, he's built to assemble... I guess you could say in a way that resembles a robot anime, manga, whatever, kind of deal. So, you push him together, and then you press this button, and... He takes off. Isn't that delightful? Then he comes around and starts to form some sort of uh, leg dealio. Pull his legs apart. Start rotating things out. Gotta get these feet up. Yeah, I am trying to do this quickly. I'm trying to do this quickly because I don't want you guys to watch me do a whole robot thing. But the fact that he's kind of a mix of a parts former and a transformer, I think, is a very, very cool idea, very cool, interesting, well-designed sort of concept. Right, push those back around so that they're now kind of, he's got rods up his ass. And we're getting somewhere. Okay, then we gotta sort of unplug this. Yep. Then in a very cool formational sort of thing, his whole sort of chassis just plugs into this. As long as you can get it right. <clears throat> Don't make the fool out of me. There we go. His whole chassis sort of comes in. This whole back cabinet needs to do something. Yes, that's right. This cap back cabinet slides back and is in the kind of a backwards position here. Then one of the cooler features of the toy, his arms are now on rails that slide forward, slide forward, rotate those down, here are those tiny ratchets, his robot fists are hiding, and all we have to do is pop them open, spin them around, pop them open, spin them around, Hold his 
dire battles thing here. Clickety clacks. And now, we push this button. Fantastic. I love that button. Wow. What, what an amazing sort of thing that they've put together here. It's a robot, it's a transformer, it's a parts former. What a thing of beauty. <laughs> I love this guy, you know? Um, with the two parts that we just kind of arbitrarily threw off earlier, they have a little clippy thing. I know it's not super exciting, but they clip together and they go to the side. Unless you don't want them to go to the side. Then I guess they don't go to the side. They can go wherever you want. That's the correct formation for that. Uh, you push those legs down. Wow. What a tremendous figure. Whew, you know? Phew. That was, uh... What a great, great looking figure that is. Um, you know, this is such a tremendous looking thing. Let's, let's bring him in close a little bit. Get some, uh, details. Hello. I'm a nice looking robot. Tremendous. Uh, you know, these box things have to open and move his arms, but they do open, so that's nice. They still look good. You got all the range of articulation and motion that you would expect. I mean, what what do you want from me here? Like, I'm, I don't really like going through articulation range, but you know, it's a it's basic it's a masterpiece Takara sort of thing. If you want to make a pose, you can probably do it. Uh, the only real sort of red flag or yellow flag here, um, his torso was a little bit hard to get moving. Because it kind of bumps up against those uh, back bits, those uh, things that you saw me put away earlier. Uh, so you have to be kind of careful. They can, t he can turn quite far, but you got to be careful not to push it too hard without gently maneuvering those pieces around. Um, his torso does actually have a small amount of bend, as you can see, just a little bit. Not much, but if you need a tiny bit of bend, he has it. And that's a lot more than other, a lot of other robots will offer you, so that's, you know, that is a very solid uh, thing to have in there. Obviously, you might remember that there were several bits of pieces and, and guff uh, earlier um, in the box. He has a tray of, like, I guess you would describe them as kind of like extra bits and weapons and stuff uh, that you can put in. Probably the ones you're going to like the most are the swords of which he has two. Uh, they have a very nice hilt, and I'll, I'll show you guys that, that hilt here. Well, I mean, you, got, you guys got to see it for a brief microsecond. Come on, come on. There you go. It's a very nice, like, little, very nice hilt details there. Very, uh, very nice. What you, what you would, should really just expect. It's a very nice finish to the uh, blades themselves. And yeah, he can, you know, ratchets around, clickety clacks. He can hold a lot of poses. I'm not going to go through like a full pose range. You can obviously find people online just really showing off how great of a range he has. The uh, short answer is he stands really well, even on my really shaky sort of surface I have here. And he uh, holds poses very nicely. There's not, not really a lot you can uh, sort of ask him to do more than he already does. Now, if you don't like those, uh, these shoulder guns here, there are a couple of options. You get, like... These sort of vaguely more gun-like things. So if you don't like those, you can pop those out. You can pop those out if you can negotiate it. Got a good seal on that, apparently. You can pop those out, and you can insert 
some more sci-fi sort of weaponry, I guess. I realize he's a giant robot, but you know that, that those rods were kind of seventies in style. You can get sort of a more modern-looking sort of thing going on here, and obviously you can lower them and aim them or or do whatever you want with them. You know, sky's the limit. Really, like there's there's no many limits to this figure. He can does what he does whatever he wants to do, you know? But, that's not all, and this is again, if we go through the book, if you remember the book, I do, there's still a whole heap of extra modes to go through. There's a walker mode, there's a giant wall of stupid mode, there's a whole bunch of modes. Let's put him in a couple other modes, just to take a look. But before that, let's have a quick look at a feature that you all love. Here we go. Yeah. Glow your eyes. Yep, he has light piping, and it's a pretty solid amount. So if you're the kind of person who has to get glowing orange eyes, he's got him. And here we are with a uh, couple of sort of modes. Um, the mode on the right is called Hopper. Uh, he is an official in the book mode. Pretty nice. Reminds me a lot of Mech Warrior and, and Battle Tech and all of those, those cool robot things. Very much, uh, I liked when I saw that, that was one of the modes. I really thought that's really cool. Uh, and then I threw the rest of the pieces together that were left over from not being used in that mode into this kind of stupid flying thing. But you know, you can find your own uh, modes if you like. I'm going to put this guy into what I guess is kind of the other major sort of pinnacle mode, and uh, we'll do a sort of summary when we do that. Here we go. And here it is, the final mode that we'll be looking at today, Battle Trizer, which is most notable, other than looking like a ship kind of thing here, uh, is equally notable for being the only mode, official mode I guess, that uses all of the Dia Battles parts completely. Uh, he, obviously he doesn't use like these uh, extra bits that we saw earlier, all the swords. Uh, yeah, I guess you might be able to jam them in somewhere so that they exist. Uh, speaking of the swords, I don't think there's a way to holster them. They're kind of being held by Dia Battles or they're to the side. Uh, not perfect, but it doesn't really matter. The swords are definitely more of a, hey look, swords, than a, uh, you know, primary feature of the figure. Nice battleship sort of thing going on. Uh, definitely a great way to round out this figure is with this uh, cool looking battleship mode. Now, if you're wondering, hmm, could there be any downsides? The answer is yes. I'd say that there are one major downside That, if you're not aware, is a Voyager class uh, Transformer Silverbolt from Hasbro. Which means that this guy, all up, is, uh, you know, he's not big. He is not huge. He kind of stands shoulder to shoulder with your average Voyager size toy. Not really ideal if you're the kind of person that's used to masterpiece scale Transformers or any of the third-party robots that, you know, get way higher than all of this stuff. So he is kind of a little bit of a short ass. Um, that's slightly uh, reasonable in the sense that uh, he does scale pretty much exactly as you would expect a Dia Battles to scale given that uh, the Diaclone and Dianaut here are exactly in scale with the Diaclone drivers, so hard to complain about the scale being weird when the scale is exactly right. But if you like bigger robots, that's not going to suit you perfectly. Now, that being said, I don't think you'll get him for any less than 150 US dollars. Um, that's kind of the cheapest prices that I've sort of seen him go for. Outside of, you know, I guess picking it up super cheap on a super lucky buy. 
So, thanks, Silverbolt. Get out of here. Uh, show stealer. So that kind of puts you in this awkward position. Is this really, really awesome, functional, very cool figure, but not huge figure, worth about as much as, uh, you know, a masterpiece or a uh, pretty decent third-party figure? I think yes. Um, well, I think yes, because I bought it, didn't I? But, uh, that's probably the biggest consideration here is, he's not huge, he's really fun. If that's exactly what you want, he's gonna be perfect. This has been Dire Battles version 2 from Takara. I've been Carl, and thank you for watching.